I'm Anil Kumar. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos, posting suggestions and questions. In this video, I'm going to discuss transformation of graph. The questions have been provided by one of our subscribers who is preparing for GCSE. Now, before I begin, let me uh, explain to you some very basic concepts. So let us say we have a graph, uh, something like this. So it's a general function, it seems to be a polynomial. So let's say it is a function f of x. Now, and we'll consider a point on this graph. Let me consider a point somewhere here called P, whose coordinates are x and y. Now the transformation function g of x could be a times f of k times x minus p plus q. So that is a general formula for transformation of any function in general, right? Now in this case, within the brackets, whatever you have, the factors k and p refer to the horizontal shift, right? k is horizontal stretch or compression, p is horizontal translation, left or right. A is a vertical stretch and Q is vertical translation. Now let us see if we have a graph of f of x with let us say a point P which is x and y. In that case, how the points are related. So if we go with this transformation, then in that case, the points on the function g of x after transformation will be something like this. The x values are only affected by things which are within the brackets, right? So that is to say the factor k and p, right? These two factors will affect the x value. So what will happen to the image of this point? Let me call this as p dash, that the original value of x will now be multiplied by 1 over k. So it will be, let me write 1 over k here and then we'll add p to it. So that is the transformation which takes for the x value. As far as the y value is concerned, the outside points a and q, they refer to vertical stretch compression and this is translation, right? So, so the y value gets multiplied by a times y and then we add the value of q. Of course, if q is negative, then it will be translating downwards. I hope that makes sense, right? So you'll get transform points kind of like this. To give you an example, if I have a function g of, let us say, 2x, in that case, the coordinates of the point which we are talking about will be, x will be divided by 2, and there will be no change to the y coordinate, right? However, if I have the point as minus 3 g of x plus 2, for example, in that case, the point, the image will now be x plus 2 means it moves left two units. So the x value will be reduced by 2, moving left. So that plus 2 means moving left and the y value will be stretched by minus 3. Minus is a reflection on the x-axis. So we'll get a new coordinate, which will be minus 3 times the original value of y. You get an idea, right? If you have something like this on the transformed function, which is, let's say, half of x minus 3. Now, in this case, there is no change in the y value only the x value changes. It gets horizontally stretched by a factor of 2 and it moves 3 units to the right. So the point will be the x value gets multiplied by a factor of 2 and then we will add to it 3 and the y value will remain as such. Right. So let's take another example where there is a vertical compression. So the graph of half of uh, g of let's say and let's take this as 3 and let's take this as x minus 1 
and let's do some vertical translation also let's say we write this as one right in this case the coordinates for the transform point we are considering the same point on the function which has x and y as its value will now will be something like this can you write it down well the x value will first be divided by three right and then we are going to add one since it translates horizontally one unit horizontally it gets compressed by a factor of one third as far as the y value is concerned that gets multiplied by half and then subtract one from it to get the image point so what you have learned here in short is that the outside values a and q reflect vertical transformations if a is positive then it is and positive and greater than one then it is a stretch positive between zero and one then it is a compression a negative value of a means reflection of x-axis positive value of q means translate q units up negative means q units down inside things happen in the reverse direction if k is greater than one we are actually dividing the x value right you can see that twice x means x value becomes half of it and if p is positive well we are adding x minus p if i write here like here i've written minus three it means it moves three units to the right so x value increases we add three to it so i hope you got this concept now let us take the questions which i've just received from one of my viewers we are going to answer these questions one by one. I have just taken the printout of the email sent to me. So we will just use the same graph and the values. Question number one here is, the graph of y equals to f of x is shown below. The coordinates of the maximum point of this curve is 1, 4. So the maximum is right there and the coordinates are 1, 4. Let me write this point as p for us, right? So this point p is given to us as 1, 4, correct? So that is given to us. Now, we need to find coordinate of this point on different functions, right? So the question here is, write down the coordinates of the maximum point of the curve with the equation f of x plus 3. Now, since you cannot see the other part of the page, I will write the function here we are looking into these functions f of x plus 3 and then we are saying minus of f of x so these are the new functions say y equals to okay the next function is f of x minus 3 and then we have f of minus x we need to write down their new points for p right so what will they be x plus 3 means horizontally it is moving three units left so so the point will be 1 minus 3 the y value remains same which is same as minus 2 4 correct so that will be your answer minus of f of x means that the y value becomes negative so we get 1 minus 4 as our answer f of x minus 3 means that the graph moves three units down so the point will move three unit down x value remains same y value reduced by 3 so it will be 4 minus 3 which is 1 f of minus x means that the x value will be reflected on y so it becomes negative of whatever it is 1 becomes minus 1 y remains same is that clear now here every question was just one mark each so the answer provided is good enough right so let's take the second question now it is similar question where now we are given the minimum point so the minimum point given to us is let me write down this point as 2 minus 3 we need to write down the coordinates of minimum point on the curve with different equations so the equations given this time are so let me copy these equations for you so first one is f of x plus 2 then we have minus f of x and then we have f of x plus 2 and then we have f of minus x now what will be the new points of the image in this particular case so let's write down the new points for each one of them x plus 2 means 
moving left by 2 units, so that becomes 2 minus 2 as 0, right? So it becomes this. Minus of fx means no change to x. Inside, nothing is happening. But the y value becomes negative of whatever it is. So negative 3 becomes positive 3. f of x plus 2 means nothing happens to the x value. y value is increased by 2. So we have 2. Adding 2 to minus 3 gives us minus 1 f of minus x means the x value becomes negative of whatever it is. So it is minus 2 and the y value remains as minus 3. So is that clear? So those are the answers. And here the total marks are 2, right? Okay. Question number 3. The graph of y equals to f of x is shown here. The coordinates of the maximum point on this curve are minus 2 and 1. Write down the coordinates of maximum point of the curve with different equations. So we are looking into this particular point. Again, let me write this point P as minus 2 and 1. Now, once again, I'll copy all the functions given to us. The first one is y equals to f of x minus 3. Then we have y equals to f of minus x. And then we have minus of f x plus 2. And then we have f of minus x minus 1. Now, I think you are clear about it. You can actually pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions, right? Now, the very first one, x minus 3 means x value increased by 3, right? So you do minus 2 plus 3, you get 1. y value remains same. Minus x means negative 2 becomes positive 2. Minus outside means the y value becomes negative, but inside we have x plus 2. So we'll also take away 2 uh, from this particular equation, right? So 2 the, from the x value. So if I take away 2, I get minus 4. It becomes more negative. The y value 1 becomes negative 1 since it is minus f of x plus 2. Now we have f of minus x means the x value becomes negative of whatever it is and the y value minus 1 means 1 minus 1 gives us 0. The graph translates one unit down, right? So that is how we are going to answer these questions. Now let's look into question number 4. The graph of y equals to f of x is shown on both grids below. A. On the grid above, sketch the graph of y equals to minus f of x. That means we need to reflect on x-axis. Right? So we will now sketch on this particular graph y equals to minus of f of x. So that means this point on the x-axis remains where it is plus 5 becomes minus 5, right? So these two points are reflected down. You can take few guide points from in between, join them and draw your group. So that will be your graph. Perfect. So that is how you're going to do it. Now, let us look into the second transformation. Now the second transformation is on the grid above, sketch the function of y equals to, we will sketch it right here y equals to, second function is y equals to f of x plus 2, right? So we'll do it on the same graph. So that is the second function which we need to do. Now can you tell me what will happen to this parabola? x plus 2 means move 2 units left. It means 2 units left. So every point moves 2 units left. Let's start with the vertex. So the vertex moves 2 units left. That's where it goes. The peak on this side moves two units left so there you go and this also moves two units left so that becomes the new position joining these we get our parabola right so that is how you are going to get this particular function right okay so that is the result so i hope it is absolutely clear right the next question here is the graph of y equals to f of x is shown on both the grids below. A. On the grid above, sketch the graph of f of minus x. Now we'll sketch the graph of y equals to f of minus x. Now this minus x means reflection on 
y axis is that clear so that means we'll get it right on this side so the point vertex at 1 will now be seen at minus 1 5 remains at 5 I mean 0 5 and the other point which is at 2 5 will now be at minus 2 5 so that is how we are going to get the reflection so joining these points we get our graph right so that is the graph of this function y equals to f of minus x now the second one which is given to us is we need to do y equals, so this is part b now, which is y equals to f of x minus 2. So f of x minus 2 means we have to shift this original graph 2 units down, right? So 2 units down. Now, so the vertex which was at the point 1, 0 comes to minus or 1 minus 2 and the values shown at 5 will come 2 units down so they will be at 3 joining them we get our function right for a better graph what you could do is that you could take more points into consideration perfect but that is how you could do it so I hope that is making sense for you let's take the next question here question number 6 the graph y equals to f of x is shown in the grid on the grid below on the grid above sketch the graph of y equals to this time part a is y equals to minus f of x means the reflection on x-axis okay so basically the vertex you start with the vertex which is at minus 1 5 will now be at minus 1 minus 5 so that will be the vertex. The x-intercepts will not change, right? Since the x-axis is the one on which we are doing the reflection. So it is vertically reflected, correct? So that is how you're going to get your graph. So that is how you'll draw it. Perfect. Part B is we need to sketch y equals to f of x minus 1. So B is y equals to f of x minus 1 it is within the brackets within the brackets means you have to do horizontal translation minus 1 means you have to move horizontally one unit to one unit to the right so just one unit right so you just move one unit to the right each and every point so vertex and x intercepts are actually good points to look into so let's join them and get our final graph right so that is how you're going to do it done so I hope you understand how these transformations can be done on a graph, right? The last question here is the graph of y equals to f of x is shown on the grid. On the grid above, sketch the function y equals to f of x minus 1. This is part A, okay? The graph of y of f of x has a turning point at minus 1, 2. So this turning point is at minus 1, 2. Write down the coordinates of the turning point of a different function. So that is part b, right? So part b, the function for us is y equals to f of minus x plus 2, right? So <clears throat> that is part 2. Now let's begin and do the part 1 first y equals to f of x minus 1 means translated one unit to the right so basically one unit right so just get the vertex here and the other two points i'm just marking one unit right right so this point x could be here we could take some more points that's what i'm trying to do. this is a good point so it comes here so this that is how we'll just take some points they help you to draw join and draw a better graph do you see that part right so smooth curve on the vertex is very important so that is how you get your function which is right there f of x minus one translate one unit to the right now second part of this is that we are given this particular point p on the original function which is minus one two now we want its image on 
the graph of y equals to minus x plus 2 not in the graph which we have just sketched okay so minus x means the x value becomes negative so minus 1 becomes minus of minus 1 becomes positive 1 the y value add on 2 to it so we get 2 plus 2 as 4 so our point will be p dash will be 1 4 does make sense to you so you can write that point here in the answer and this question 7 is 2 marks with this we end all the solutions to the 7 questions I hope you understand and appreciate how we could do transformation of parabolic functions where we did horizontal and vertical translations feel free to write your comment share your views thanks a lot for sharing once again Thank you and all the best.